Hi, my name is Megan and welcome to my channel. I haven't made a video in a hot minute because I got married in October and then I bought a house a few weeks ago in January. So not a whole lot of time for filming or reading for that matter. But yeah, I got married, bought a house, a lot of big changes in a few months. Uh, this is not the house. I'm sitting on the floor in my apartment because there are no books in my bookshelf. So this is my TBR cart and I'm crouched in between a pile of laundry and this chair and there's, there's nowhere else with books in my apartment to film because I packed them all. So this is what you're getting today. I will do some videos about the house once we're actually in it. We won't be in it until early March though. I do kind of want to do some DIY content, home decor, that kind of stuff. So I might branch off into that once we are in the house because I think that would be really Really fun. But what is this video? Today I'm doing my January wrap up. I actually haven't done a wrap up yet on this channel because I made the channel a year ago and then only made like three videos. So this is actually my first ever wrap up. I feel like this is like the only time I'm even talking about what I'm reading. Like what were my other videos? Turns out I'm not a vlogger. I tried. I made, uh, this is going on a huge tangent, but I made like two or three vlogs and then a Christmas vlog that I completely filmed all of, edited, and then scrapped because it was too late. It was already after Christmas and no one wants to watch Christmas content after Christmas. So that video will never see the light of day. And from all of these, I kind of learned that I'm not a vlogger and that's okay. So I'm gonna try to do more of these sort of sit down style videos because I think I would be better at those. Anyway, too much rambling and I will talk about books now. So the first book I read in January was The Mothers by Britt Bennett. And this was my second Britt Bennett book. I also read The Vanishing Half and really enjoyed that one. So this was definitely on my list to read next. In this book, we follow Nadia Turner, who has recently lost her mother to suicide. And it's the summer between her senior year of high school and her freshman year of college. And she takes an interest in the local pastor's son. They begin dating and she gets pregnant. And so then we see her grapple with kind of this unwanted pregnancy and the decisions that come along with that. And then we follow the characters throughout the rest of their lives and kind of see how the decisions they made ripple through and affect their lives as a whole. This book was a very intricate portrayal of different ways of being a mother and what it really means to be a mother. There isn't just one kind of mother and there isn't just one way that a mother could be. And so this book really explores that idea and all the different forms that motherhood could take. It explores fertility issues, those who really want to be a mother but are struggling to become one, those who never wanted to be a mother but were forced to become one, those that choose not to be a mother, those who have lost a mother, and those that are not biological mothers but fulfill that role in someone's life. So this book really does delve into each of these kinds of situations in different ways and at different points in the characters' lives. And we see all of these various roles through the lens of different characters in a black community in Southern California. The book only focuses on a very small cast of characters, but we see how their lives are intertwined and affect one another throughout their lives in different ways. It's hard to go into too much detail without spoiling it, but if you enjoy character heavy stories that focus on relationships, either romantic, friendships, or familial, all of the above and more, then this one's definitely for you. It is very much a character-based novel, and I really enjoyed seeing how these complex characters grew and changed throughout and how their relationships with one another completely transformed over the course of many years, and I, f I just found that fascinating. There is a beautiful quote in this book Magic you want is a miracle. Magic you don't want is a haunting. And I just, I just love that. I had to write that down. It really speaks to the major themes of this book. And I just thought it was a very powerful quote. And Britt Bennett is a fantastic writer. The next book I read in January was Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons. And this is a classic from the 1930s that I 
absolutely loved. I very much enjoyed this one. It features Flora Post, who is in her early 20s, and she just recently lost both of her parents. This is not a story about grief, though. She wasn't very close with her parents, and couldn't really care less that they died. <laughs> At least that's kind of how it comes across. She was only left 100 pounds per year by her parents, so she needs to find a way to make a living, but she doesn't wanna work. That life just isn't for her. She decides she's gonna live off some relatives. So she writes around to all of her living relatives and she decides on the Stark Adders of Cold Comfort Farm. She soon finds that the Stark Adders are a very wacky bunch of backwards seeming, characters who are very different from her idea of normal, but she loves them all dearly from the get-go, despite their eccentricities. She ventures on a quest to improve each one of their lives, improve in her words, not theirs, and she does this by scheming and basically meddling in everyone's business in any way that she sees fit. I loved this book so much. I'd actually seen the movie a long time ago, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, and I hardly remembered any of it except for the fact that I just loved it. So I do want to rewatch that because I've heard it's even better than the book and I already love the book a lot. I found out that this book is actually a parody of a style of novel that was very popular back in the day, but this book actually became more famous than the style and author that it was supposed to be parodying. It's pretty clear from the start that this is a parody. It's very outrageous, over the top, ridiculous. All of the characters are complete caricatures and a lot of the scenes read like a slapstick cartoon. But this book is hilarious and charming and I absolutely fell for Flora and every member of the Stark Adder family. They're all so brilliantly written and just, oh, you just have to adore them. There's, they're, love, I love them all. If you've read the book, I'm sure you would agree that Adam is the most precious man alive. And I, uh, I just, words cannot express how much I loved every scene with him in it. This is definitely a book of low stakes and humor and not plot driven really at all. There isn't much in the way of conflict, and it's really more about the dialogue, descriptions of the scenery, and the character studies, if you will. But the writing in this book is truly excellent. The descriptions of the farm actually caught me off guard with how beautiful they are, because I really wasn't expecting that once the book started with its kind of funny, uh, tongue-in-cheek sort of tone, but then she comes in with these just gorgeous illustrations of the farm and the dialogue and all of the societal observations that Flora makes are just so witty and cleverly conceived. The portrayal of my bug, the stuffy intellectual type, was just brilliant and I really loved the sort of dialect that was created for the Stark Adders. They, a lot of the words they said weren't even real. I looked them up, I tried, but you still understood what they were saying and it was kind of like they had a language all their own. And I just thought it was just brilliant. I loved it. And this had been on my TBR since 2013. So I'm very happy to have picked it up 10 years later. The next book I read in January was Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. And I actually read this as part of an idea to read my favorite booktubers favorite books of 2022 but then we decided to buy a house and start moving out of our apartment so I did not get very far with that plan and I actually only read two books on my list so I am actually hoping to finish that this month and film a video for it but that's not coming anytime soon but anyway about the book I really really enjoyed this one as well all in all this month was just a great month for me I liked every book I read. This one is about an orc who has left the questing life behind to pursue her dream of owning and running a coffee shop. And she's joined by a team of lovable misfits who all help her set up and run the shop and they ultimately all become very important figures in her life. This book was just so wholesome and sweet, and it's really just the perfect escapism read. I kind of hate fantasy, I'm not gonna lie. Um, the thought of reading a book about someone fighting monsters and dealing with a magic system, and I don't know, what do people do in fantasy? Like go on a quest and kill people and have a war or battle or something. Yeah, I can't think of anything worse, quite frankly, but give me the same setting, but they're just making a coffee shop and drinking coffee and baking cinnamon rolls instead, and I'm there. 
apparently. I'm so there. Like the author included a short story at the end of the audiobook that was like a flashback into the orc's life of questing or whatever you want to call it. And I couldn't get through five minutes of it because it's just so boring to me. I don't like that kind of fantasy, but this book was perfect. It was so cozy, so wonderful, just baking little cute baked goods and drinking coffee and introducing all everyone in the town to coffee and making them fall in love with it. And it's just low stakes and cute and wonderful vibes. And I'm here for it. The next book I read, I did not actually finish, but I'm including it in this wrap up because I refuse to talk about this one in February when I've read like 80% of it in January. So yeah, this is The Birds and Other Stories by Daphne du Maurier. And I read Rebecca back in high school. I was obsessed with it. I made it my entire personality. It is still one of my favorite books of all time. So I've always wanted to read more du, Mar du Maurier. And I figured short stories was a great place to start. I really like short stories and I'd always wanted to read The Birds that the movie The Birds is based on. So I did and I, I have two more stories left in the collection, so, but I already know they're gonna be good because the rest of them were all really good. I love the birds. It was fantastic. Just the way she writes suspense and just foreboding and ch a chilling tone. She just knows what she's doing when it comes to that. That's what I liked about Rebecca. I just absolutely loved how chilling it felt and just the suspense that was building throughout the whole thing. And that's what she does in each one of these short stories. They're all very different from one another and they have completely different subject matter and themes and everything. But the way she writes kind of morally gray, complex characters and just suspense and a sense of unease and restlessness, it's perfect. And she really is a master at that. One common theme throughout these stories is kind of the horrific nature of nature. <laughs> There's probably a better way to say that, but yeah. So obviously we've got the birds in the first one and I really liked the story because it felt kind of like a post-apocalyptic pandemic type story, but I guess not really pandemic, but you know what I mean? Like everyone was locking themselves in their houses and preparing for kind of this disaster that was occurring and no one knew what they're doing. All they can rely on for information is the radio and no one knows what's gonna happen or what the best course of action is. And I just love books like that. Disaster, post-apocalyptic type of stories, yes. Those are for me. So I just thought it was fantastic and it really spoke to human nature and how people react in those sorts of situations. And I just found it to be very harrowing and just chilling, like I said, and, and melancholy too, which are all things that I like in a short story. But the other stories in the collection also, um, have the, that kind of theme. They feature apple trees, mountains, seaside town, all of them tie into nature in some way and how all of that kind of intertwines with human nature and the grotesqueness of humans and their actions and just, just read it. I really enjoyed the first story obviously, but I also really liked the apple tree and the little photographer. Those were fantastic. Like I said, I have two more to go, but I'm excited to read those as well because I love her. She's amazing. She can do anything. And then the final book I read in January, I actually finished today. So don't come at me. I know it's February. I don't care. Again, I'm not going to wrap that book up at the end of the month. That is so stupid. And that book is This Is What It Sounds Like by Susan Rogers. And this is a nonfiction book about kind of how our music taste is formed and what comes into play when we are developing our music tastes. So it discusses kind of how the different parts of your brain react to music and how um, things like genetics, your background, and just how your brain is wired play into the development of your music taste, which super fascinating. I didn't know any of this before. It was all completely new information for me. And the book goes through kind of the different elements of songs. So 
rhythm, timbre, lyrics, tempo, musical genre, and your comfort level with novel versus familiar sounds and how that plays into the music that you like. And so this book combines music history, science, like brain science, personal anecdotes, and a good amount of real world examples of songs that you can listen to as you read. And I do recommend doing that. I found the playlist on Apple Music and I listened along to each song as she mentioned it, which just really enhance the reading experience, and I think everyone should do that. But yeah, as someone who just really loves music and who thinks a lot about music taste and kind of the different genres and what they all mean, this book was just very personally interesting to me. I do think it would be interesting to anyone who enjoys music, is a music nerd, or really anyone who likes learning more about the brain and how it functions. And, and yeah, I just thought it was very well done. I also thought the way the book was structured and all the examples were done very well. I do feel that I learned more about what shapes my own personal music taste. And I've learned that I shouldn't really judge other people based on their taste because they can't help it if their brain is different from mine and their genes are different from mine and I need to stop caring so much about people who have bad taste. Sorry, people who have different taste to me. But yeah, I definitely recommend this for music lovers. And that is it guys. If you actually watched this video, thank you so much. I know I am not consistent and I know I have 13 followers. So thank you to those of you who stuck around. I am gonna try, well, famous last words, I am gonna try to make more videos in the future and I'm gonna try to be more consistent with them, but life got crazy for me recently. So hopefully things calm down once we get into the new house. I'm excited to show you guys that. So thank you so much again for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.